What's up guys, it's Joe the Pro here, back at it again with another video. Before this one starts today guys, I need you to please drop a like on this video, subscribe, and hit the post notification bell. Well, as you know, um, on my live streams on Sundays, we have a few guests. Um, one of them is London. And this is London's bike. What London likes to do is slam on her back brakes when she's beginning to stop her bike so her tire skids but what happened is eventually it burned a hole through her tire at one place and it actually popped it so i'm going to show you guys how to change a bicycle tire what i'm trying to do with this video is kind of take some of my viewers attention away from the bowling aspect just for a video because especially while learning the new concepts in the machines, it can get a little frustrating. So I'm going to just do a nice simple video today that just go goes over relatively simple concepts and things that we should all already know. If you have an or old ordinary bike, some of them might have disc brakes and some of them might have like brake pads that go along the rim. So that's what we have in this case here. So if you look next to her nice little pink brake brackets here, you'll see the pads there. And as well as this cable here, this cable is what you pull when you pull your brake lever and it actually squeezes the two brackets together, stopping the rim. In order to remove the tire, you're going to need to create a bigger gap between those two brake pads. So what you do, if you kind of look at this, uh, how this cable set up here if you push the brake together you can actually pull this cable out of its housing a little bit here so there we go if you see there's a little lip right there on that metal bracket that goes around the cable and that sits in the pink bracket there so all i did i i pushed in i squeezed the brackets together and i pulled that out of there next what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually remove the wheel from the bicycle in this case i'm going to need a 15 millimeter socket to remove both of the nuts on either side as you can see i removed the rim and the tire from the bicycle and off camera i actually also removed this little chain guard that they got here on the back um, it's just two phillips head screws that you unscrew there and now i've got the tire that's got to be changed what you'll need to do first is get the bead out of the rim and you also want to take off your cap for your old inner tube here also now that i've got the cap off of there usually you would go and use your tire irons to then go inside the rim and then pull the bead out that way but this tire is so worn and old that i can actually just do it with my fingers um the tire irons may be more helpful with like a bigger size tire, definitely a dirt bike tire. As you can see, I've got the bead of the tire out of the, that side of the rim. And I would not be surprised if I can just pull it away here. So as you can see, just put a little pressure there and it comes right off. So now is a good time to go around the rim, inspect the tire band on the inside and as well as the spokes because I do not want London's tire falling apart when she's riding her bike. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure all her spokes are tight and then we will begin the next step. As you can see, I've got the new tire and tube unboxed and ready to go. But there's one more thing that we are going to want to do before we start putting this together here. So you actually want to go ahead and pump up the new inner tube just a little bit so that it takes its shape and it better prevents you from pinching it when you're putting it back into the rim. So now that that tube has taken shape, I've actually gone ahead and put it inside the tire so it's kind of sitting in there. You're going to want to take the valve where you fill your tire. You're going to want to put it through your rim there just so you don't lose it when putting the tire together and then go ahead and throw your cap on there so it doesn't fall out of there on you. Now I'm going to start putting the tire on the rim. So basically you're going to want to try to just start one side of the tire onto the rim. Um, it's kind of hard for me to do this with one hand, but what I'm going to do is just kind of get that one side to seat on there, just like that. I've got the rim pretty much sitting in the tire on the one side. And now I'm gonna go ahead 
and go on the other side and just kind of pry it pry the tire onto the rim like that and just squeeze it since it's already around the rim for the most part all right so this might be a little bit more challenging for some of our younger folks here um you're going to get to a point where you have the whole tire on the rim except for like one last little part here this is the hardest part to get around and the easiest thing you can do especially if you're using your tire irons is go s very small segments at a time because what that's going to do it's going to create less pressure on the irons and less pressure on your fingers and then you get to the point where it's like sitting right on top of the rim there and all you can do is take your finger and push push it right down in there and now my tire is back on the rim and before i go ahead and inflate it i am going to take some of the simple green here actually it's not simple green anymore but same concept i'm just going to squirt it in the bead of the tire there so that way on both sides the tire will sit on the rim the correct way and prevent it from getting all squirrely on there so this is just kind of lubricating the tire here one of the reasons why i put the cardboard down before we started as you can see i'm running out here but that should be good for what we're using it for so now i'm going to go ahead and take off the cap for the tube there and we're going to start inflating another thing i forgot to mention um before you start inflating your tire make sure that your valve stem there that's poking up out of the rim is pointing straight up you definitely don't want it at an angle like that because what that'll do over time if your tire shifts anymore it, that can actually cut that valve stem right off and pop your tire on the spot so i'm gonna go ahead and start inflating this tire here um, I'm going to fill it to a higher PSI than I normally would just to get that um, that tire bead to sit on the rim the right way. All right, so I got the tire inflated, and now what you're looking for is you're going to look at this bead here on the tire. If you look on this, it's sitting right above the rim there, and you just want to follow that around the tire and the rim to make sure that you have an even amount of beads sticking out on the whole way around the tire here and on this side we do make sure you check both sides and this one looks good too so that's the main reason why we put the soap in the bead before we inflate it so that helps the bead pop out like how we want it to here so this one looks good i'm going to go ahead and deflate it to what the spec says on the tire because it definitely does not need to be 50 PSI. We've got it to the right PSI. I put my cap on for my valve stem, and now we're gonna go ahead and get this back onto the bike. Before you put the tire onto the frame of the bike, you're going to wanna take your chain, and hopefully you didn't tangle it as much as I did here, and wrap it around the rear sprocket there, because if you mount the tire onto the bike before doing this you are going to be taking it back off so get it back into the frame there i would push it all the way up like that put your nuts on each side try not to lose them while you're doing this oops oh boy okay so i've successfully snugged up the nuts on each side and now before I adjust the chain tension, I'm going to go ahead and wrap the chain around the front sprocket up here. And as you can see, this is going to be extremely, well, extremely loose. So this is where this space comes into play here. So what you're going to do, you're going to pull back on the tire till it puts enough tension on the chain like that so you don't want this to be like super tight like just guitar string tight you're going to want a little slack right about there actually um you definitely don't want too much slack because then you're going to be fixing it every time you go around the block now next when you're tightening the two nuts you're going to want to pay attention to the front here this is what keeps the tire centered in between the frame here so you're just going to want to make that as straight as possible there 
Make sure the distance between each side of the tire and the frame are approximately equal. Once you find that, go ahead and tighten your nuts up. All right, now the nuts are tight on the rim and as you can see we are free spinning there so that is a good thing we've got the correct amount of chain tension there now lastly before we go ahead and ride this thing around we are going to go ahead and reconnect our brake cable here on the back because that is definitely important i have now reconnected our brake cable here on the back and I'm now going to put our chain guard here on the back because God forbid if London gets any grease from the chain on her shoes, oh, the good Lord's gonna hunt us down for that one. So definitely wanna make sure that's on there. I guess you can reposition these things too. Wow, how fancy. That is how you correctly change your tire on a bicycle. So I hope this video helped somebody out. If it did, please let us know in the comments below. If you have any other requests for future videos, please let me know about those too, as we will be back in the bowling alley probably for the next video. And without further ado, please like, subscribe, and peace, and remember to do it like a pro. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.